I am a hoarder. I find it difficult to throw things away. If you are anything like me, you will understand. When an object stops sparking joy, does it necessarily mean it has to be packed off into a bin someplace? Mindless generation of trash should never be an option if it can be helped. Take this old lacquered teak wood bowl for example. It has seen better days, but now it is worn out with constant usage. There are cracks on the underside. Its beautiful thick coat of lacquer is cracking and chipping away at places. But I am not ready to sacrifice it at the altar of minimalism just yet. What is that they say? One man's trash is another man's treasure. It is going to be a hard job trying to remove all the layers of lacquer on the bowl. But I begin by sanding away at it. I intend to paint the bowl and accordingly I am covering it with a few layers of clear primer. Excessive love for objects, stashing and hoarding is actually quite at odds with these times when KonMari, decluttering and simplification are such buzzwords. Lest you misunderstand, I have absolutely no quarrel with minimalism, particularly since reducing our needs and questioning a culture that thrives on excessive and damaging consumption is really the need of the hour. But what I am trying to address is the actual process of decluttering itself. With a view to simplifying our image space, do we have to discard and give away mindlessly? Every now and then, I come across objects that are way past their shelf life. It would make no difference if I tossed these away.
just as I feel tempted to throw such objects away, I take a moment to consider. Does this placing it from my environment into a landfill someplace solve a problem? If the object like this old wooden bowl inherently does not have utility as a hand-me-down, will I be able to find somebody who will find it useful in its current form? If not, it makes better sense to find ways that help the object become useful again. All of us have things that will fall into this category. Clothes that don't fit anymore, books that we have outgrown, old furniture, pots and pans that have lost their shine and sparkle. If we are not careful and intentional, decluttering and minimizing can also become yet another aspect of our toxic disposal culture. Think about it. The reason decluttering is such an industry today is because we buy too much, not because we don't throw away enough. The problem really needs to be considered at source. Mindful consumption is possibly more important than mindless and ruthless downsizing of our material environment. A good friend once told me, if you did not give a second thought before buying it, it never meant much to you. So how you discard will also be thoughtless and emotionless. My own answers have come from acceptance of damage, patina and disrepair. I hold on to things that are worth salvaging until I am able to give them the time and attention. Truth be told, I quite enjoy my carefully curated clutter. My workspace is a testament to this habit of never throwing stuff away. Even this temporary one created in one corner of my bedroom for the lockdown since the studio is currently out of bounds. If storage is an issue, it can be a strategy to dedicate a few drawers in your home to the recyclables. Be realistic about what objects you stash away and don't forget to constantly manage its contents so that the things don't begin to overwhelm you over a period of time. The paintwork on the bowl is complete and now I am going to seal it with a few layers of diluted waterproof glue. Far from representing chaos and confusion, the things we surround ourselves with can also symbolize an attempt to care enough, mindless hoarding and mindless decluttering are sides to the same coin.